How you doing, YouTube? <sighs> Matt Matt Sabiris, back with yet another review. It's about to get dangerous up in here. Because we have a cognac barrel aged maple barley wine, son. Yeah, a little bit of Burlington Beer Company in the form of their mahogany and tweed. Um, I love barley wine. I love maple beers. I love cognac barrel aged stuff. When you're talking about a 12% ABV monstrosity from a brewery that is sneaky awesome when it comes to their big beers i really want to drink this but i really don't want to drink it because it's gonna get me fucking ripped anyway because it's gonna yeah. let's put it this way preconceived notions abound i think this is gonna be fantastic and i'm gonna want to drink this whole can i'm gonna drink it way too fast and i'm gonna go play video games and i'm gonna suck at them Anyway, uh, yeah, let's just pour this. I'm pouring this like a dum dum because if this has a crazy head on it, I will be a monkey's uncle. Oh, look at that. We're actually getting a pretty good head on this. I'm actually very, very surprised. Um, you're talking about 20% EBV. Um, Steven, who gave me this, was nice enough to actually rate that on there. Um, that's all I got. It's 2020 release. Um, it was actually released. Okay, nice. It was released towards the beginning of 2020, so it has just under a year on it. Um, Label-wise, I've always dug Burlington's labels. They're some of the best in the game. That pinstriping thing they do is super fucking cool, so I'm always a fan of that. And that's honestly how barley wine should look. You know, index finger. Um, I mean, that head's bigger than what a barrel-aged barley wine should look like, but this dude poured it like a dum-dum in a very fun way. Come on, you admit it. That pour was fun. Anyway, um, yeah, index finger of this infinite creamy top to it. So that's a little bit out of character for a burn bur barrel-aged barley wine. Um, but it has that nice soft khaki-colored head to it. But it's that doo-doo water body to it. That murky doo-doo water body. That really clear barley wine is bad barley wine. Let's put it that way. So, kind of excited for the nose on this one. If this sucks... I'm going to be very sad because it doesn't smell like it sucks. So what do we got going on here? You're getting, <clears throat> so you're getting the cognac barrel. You're definitely getting the cognac spirit. You're definitely getting the maple syrup. You're definitely getting the English barley wine st side of the beer itself. They're all at perfect levels and they're all kind of coalescing, kind of merging into this kind of pre sugar daddy stage. You know, when I talk about barley wines, I talk about, Oh, I want it to taste like sugar daddies more or more, uh, more specifically, I wanted to get past the sugar daddy stage and, and slowly slide in to the beautiful raisinette stage. It's impossible, impossible for me to assume a barley wine that is a year old to be in that stage. So the fact that it's giving me those sugar daddy vibes is quite nice, but it's really a cool nose because you're getting those distinct cognac notes, that maple note and the actual barley wine itself, but none of them are heavy handed. None of them are out of control. Um, it's a big beer, it's a sweet beer, but they're all in concert. They're all kind of at the same level. And that's the mark of a really good beer, especially when you have this many moving parts with it, with that adjunct of the maple syrup, with the barrel and the spirit involved. It just smells pretty nice. So yeah, sugar daddies, maple, that nice kind of soft cognac, kind of non overly hotness on it. We dive it in. Cheers. Okay, first things first. I'm going to tell you about the thing I hate most about this beer. And you know what I hate most about this beer? Is me. You want to know why I hate me? Because I will let you in on a little secret. So... When I do beer reviews, this is not a secret, I've said this before. When I do beer reviews, I do two, three, or four in a sitting. Um, if I'm going to do them like kind of midweek, uh, usually I reserve them for the weekends, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But when I do them midweek, it's usually two. Um, but on Saturdays, I usually do four. Um, so you're talking about like if I do two to three times a week, you know, two to four in a sitting, that gives me the amount of beer reviews that I post. So hence the reason why I post every day, sometimes a couple a day. I am doing four tonight, and I did a lager, because I do the elevation thing. I go from, you know, bottom to top. So I picked I picked out a lager, a mystery beer. That's the thing you want to key on there, and then an imperial IPA. 
and then um, between actually before that, I picked out a lager, a mystery beer, a five percent hazy, and then an imperial IPA. So the mystery beer ended up being like a seven percent uh, IPA. So I decided to audible um, and be like, okay, I don't want to do this five percent hazy. It's just gonna get lost. My palate. It's just it, it, the other beer was a pretty pretty aggressive. Um, IPA, and I'm like, it's just going to get lost, and I'm not going to do this beer justice, so let me pick out another beer and audible on that one. And I was like, you know what, I'll do this one. And therein lies the problem, is that typically when I do the four beers, that's, for me, about, I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour. Um, so this beer's only been out of my fridge for about 10 minutes. Because the other review I did before this one, when I pulled it out, I went through pretty quick. It's way too cold. I just basically wanted to say it's way too cold, and I made you listen to, like, three minutes of bullshit. So it's just way too cold. So we need to warm this sucker up, because there's some fun in this fucking beer. Maybe I... Do I post this tonight? Maybe I post this tonight. I think this is, like, one of those ones where I film and then I just post it. I have other Burlington beers, though. No, I, I think I just posted them all. Anyway, we'll see what's what. But... It's it's fantastic. This is the kind of barley wine I love. And like I said at the get, and this is me just keeping on talking, trying to warm this beer up, is that, you know, Burlington's known for their hazies. You know, that's pretty much what they lean into and what a lot of people like. And for good reason, they make really good hazy IPA. But being, you know, being that I've been to Burlington Beer Company a couple times, and they always have these sneaky cans and bottles, and I mean, like, barrel-aged quads and, you know, these kind of, like, beers that they're not necessarily known for and almost every single time i have a dark malt forward beer uh that's barrel age or something of that ilk they tend to be fucking stellar so i think their kind of dark malty game is super underappreciated and this one actually kind of leans in that direction first things first the mouth feels fantastic it comes off almost like Belgian quad double bock that you like. That's how soft and creamy it is. You're talking about a 12% barley wine. Sure, spend time in wood, so it's going to impart a bit of oak tannins, and I'm sure that's kind of imparted a bit of mouthfeel on it, but it's absolutely fantastic. For a barley wine, this is one of the best barley wine mouthfeels I've ever had in my life. I cannot understate this enough. The maple syrup is gently and deftly used. It's not a maple syrup bomb near your face. You do get that maple syrup. But it comes off almost like a cognac. Okay, so this is cognac barrel aged. There's a nice, uh, meaningful kind of cognac spirit to this. There's a soft barrel char to it, the soft, that nice oakiness in the barrel. Take this cognac barrel, then put maple syrup in that barrel, and then, you know, drain a maple syrup, then age this beer in that barrel. That's how the maple syrup comes off in this beer. It doesn't come off as a, a maple syrup added beer. It's like one of those kind of founders, sweet repute kind of things to where it's a it's a beautiful, well done barley wine. That was aged in a cognac barrel that held maple syrup, syrup at one time. And I, I, if that makes any sense, it just, it's, it's, it's all so cohesive because the English barley wine is there. It's rich, it's sugar daddy-esque. It's a very well done English barley wine on its own. I think if you had this without any adjunct to barreling with a year or so time on it, I think you're like, this is a really, really good barley wine. But then when you add that kind of maple syrup in there and it's relatively low impact, but enough to kind of peek its head out, but not be that overly sweet breakfast morning pancakey kind of syrup thing, I'm in love. And then that cognac, which is one of my favorite barrels of all time, once you throw that cognac in the mix in the same kind of sense in that it is, it's, you, you can't miss it, but it's not overly aggressive. It's not overshadowing or staging up any other part of that beer. That's a beautiful thing, man. That's an absolutely beautiful thing. And then when you add the complexity of the barrel, when you get that, oh, you get that soft little char in there. <sighs> This is fucking really, really good. Like, really good. And it's not even at its peak because it's still too cold. But every time I talk way too long, it gets a little warmer, comes out a little bit more. I'm actually starting to get an aggressive bittering. It's an English barley wine. 
but there is a decent amount of bittering here. Um, I believe that's a combination of hops and maybe a little bit of barrel char that's starting to rear its head. This is English barley wine. Don't don't be confused by it, but it's fantastic. Let's put it this way: my favorite barley wine of all time is Thomas Hardy Ale. You'd see them up there, and they did one of the newer ones. They did a cognac barrel aged version of their barley wine um, uh, of the Thomas Hardy Ale. It was actually the first barrel they used. It was uh, what was the name of the I forget the name of the cognac maker. But it was like the guy, they actually went as far to be as poetic about it. And that Rhine, was it called Rhine? Anyway, the cognac maker that they picked, cognac's like champagne, it has to be from cognac. Um, the person who started the, the cognac distillery actually came from the same place where Thomas Hardy was born. It's very romantic. And that was really, really, really good. Like, really good. It was the first barrel aged version they did when they kicked off the new line of Thomas Hardy Ale. So it had a long time in that barrel. I like this fucker better. I mean, it's just that good. God damn. Fucking Burlington. You guys ain't fucking around. Hmm. I just can't get past that mouthfeel. To get that soft, creamy, Belgian quaddy, doppelbocky level of creaminess on a, on a barley wine is just bonkers talk. Combine the fact that it's a really well done barley wine. I mean, I'm repeating myself over and over again on this one, and I don't care because it's just that good. Yeah, this is fantastic. Thank you very much, Stephen, for sending this off. Jesus Christ. Good God. I don't know what else to say. It's fantastic. It tastes like... So it tastes like it has maple syrup in it. Um, but... If you were to kind of ignore that, it it tastes like a fucking eight, ten year old fucking old stock hardy. You know, that's kind of where it is. It's not to the sugar or not to the raisinette stage, but it's in that sugar daddy stage. But that that coolly and gently kids glovey level of maple syrup just elevates it to another level. Very I know it's a wheat wine, but that sweet repute, it's very give me sweet repute vibes. Man, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Let's talk about it. Is this one of the better Barley wines, done. Just barley wine. Doesn't matter. We can include all of them. You know what I mean? Barrel age, adjunct, whatever that I've had is like yes, Mount Rushmore status up there. This is like this is revolution level shit. This is fucking Coonan level stuff. Yeah, it's just that good. It's fucking fantastic. Value and availability. I'm curious on this one. If, if this is less than $10 a can, I would punch someone in the fucking face and steal it from them. That's like, that's the thing. Like, it's like, you know, you tell me this is $40, like the, those rev cans. And I'm not going to say it, it, it's, it's rev level stuff. Listen, rev, you know, you, you know, you, you guys, you and Coon and you got your shit fucking rolling when it comes to the barrel age kind of barley wine jams, but. This is worthy of being in that, in that conversation. But you guys are, you know, throwing out those cans, those 12 ounces. You know, just 16 ounces of this. If you give me this, if this is less than 10 bucks, then I'm fucking fighting whoever fucking made that price. Because I'm, in a good way, I'm fighting them because I, I love them, not because I hate them. Because it's a love fight um, for anything. Uh, good God, this review. Anyway, and leave you with, if you like what we like this beer, if you like, if you like old ale, man, old age, old ale, barley wine, man, this is just it. This is the shit. Like if you like barley wine, you're like barrel aged beers. You just, <sighs> he bought this. Like it, I doubt this looks like it came off a shelf. You can see there's a barcode right there. And he was so nice to write the ABV on there for me. That's like, I'm buying it off a shelf barcode. That's not Burlington. Doesn't do that. You know what I mean? He's buying individual cans off shelf. Doesn't have a price on it. I'm really curious about the price because if you can tell me if they say, okay, this is 25 bucks a four pack. That's like criminally cheap. If this is 25 bucks a four pack. Anyway, I'm reviews over. I need to go enjoy this beer and, and, and sol in solitude and just sit in my couch and just get angry at how much I like this beer. Anyway, uh, yeah, so there you go. If you like barley wine. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, down there, if you want to talk about this beer, 
Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff, Beer Massive. If you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review as much as this guy. Hopefully you're enjoying this beer right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers.